What's not to do more? You know what I mean? Uh, John, this um, this bid for or this um, estimate expires the end of July, so that's not going to. Yeah, I'm not worried about. Did that? Well, that's from. No, that's from West. That's, that's from Yeah, that's. Uh, so that's we don't yeah. have to do it today. No. Okay. Um, next month would be good. Okay. You know. Because that would mean that we have it by October. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So we have to uh, vote on I think you don't as I don't know that's I think so. I mean I guess we can. Uh, um, but, uh, some other uh, real quick though, I would like to have to vote. I'm sorry. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Do we have to vote on this? I think you should be able to do your job. Yeah. If you think this is the right thing to do, we clearly need equipment. But if, if the board wants to vote on it, we can certainly I vote. I don't think we need to. Job? Yeah, I, I mean, if we're going to enter into an agreement, yes, I would want the board to vote on that. Okay, then. I make a motion. Make a mo All right, go ahead. Make a motion. We go with West Coast Turf. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There you go. Okay. Nice. So you can get the... Uh, so you'll get it rolling, but they won't. we won't get them delivered till I guess, the end of September. Or the very end of September. It'll probably come in with all the other stuff for the golf course. It'll come okay. In. okay. Just out of curiosity, you said one person per hole? How many currently do you have per hole? How many holes? Like one person, three holes, or one person? Uh, let me see. So I got one for <laughs> twelve. I got basically twelve people, so one for every three. one and a half holes. One and a half holes. Yeah. So you're six people short of being able to make that. Yeah. Well, once we get a lot of this debt behind us here in the next couple of years, we should be able to do that, right? Yeah, you would think. That's what I'm That's thinking. a lot of money, man. That's six bits. <laughs> Remember, minimum wage, but I did say minimum wage at that time was definitely going to be $15 an hour. Just raise the price of golf. Right, so that's 30 grand, so six more people, that's 180, 200,000 more a year. Just in payroll, not payroll taxes and fees, not group related pay insurance, and all the other good stuff that comes along with it. You know, um, but you bond health insurance payment. by that cost, cost of health insurance. So you're probably looking at two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Not, to but do you won't have a bond payment at that point. This is true. We'll have new greens, new greens. fairways. Yeah. It's a money pit. Yeah. yeah, probably have a debt. Probably have a uh, building debt. You know. The question is, would 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 those six additional people make a big enough difference that we could recoup and say it's three hundred thousand? So we want to make six hundred. Bingo. Yeah, I would say half. Of, if you wanted to do that, you wouldn't have. I could. You could probably do it with half that, with three more people. Could could with. Okay, let's say it's it goes from 12 to 15. Once we get new greens, 2025, and this is me being right. optimistic. Optimistic. Please do. Walk more. I would love to. I would love to, but don't tease me like that. Don't stop. Don't talk. Don't talk, buddy. Don't talk dirty like that. <laughs> Shut your filthy mouth. <laughs> well, but Philly and you guys know. Uh, I would love to. Walk my green. Yeah. That's, that's. I'd love to. That's, that's a. That's at least a three-man operation, four-man operation alone. You got to have out there to do that to get it done in time. You got to have at least four guys out there. But the wear, there. but the wear and tear on the green is oh, so absolutely. much less. They better cut. It's a better quality of cut. And some of those wear spots on the outside of the perimeter, that goes away. You got a walk mall operation. Well, green's the key. I mean, that's the key to the success of course, period. So, which remind, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you this in the uh, my part before I digress. Um, we will be after the AGA tournament scalping down the collars. Um, with the greens mowers. We're just going to mow them down with greens mowers like we did last year. Um, we don't have time with this sub air and everything else. We don't have time to go and cut them out, sod cut them, and lower them. We just don't have it. It's not there. I'm right, sorry. The it, was a, it was a plan. But after the, the AGA, the term, yeah, in two weeks from now, <coughs> we're going to go ahead and do that. And then, <coughs> let's see, so that's mid, probably by mid August, they'll be fine. You, you know, hardly even tell. When are you going to aerate again? Uh, end of July, 19th, 20th, and 21st, I believe it is. It's the week, it's the week after the tournament. Yeah, the week after the tournament, correct. Yeah. And that will be a deep tine, three-quarter inch. So less holes, but deeper and bigger. Okay. Um, uh, back to uh, budget for the common ground. So we got to get the uh, fuel corrected. Um, that should be an $8,000 annual number. It's currently four. 
Um, that got lost in translation somehow last year. It was eight the year before. It just somehow got lost. So, but I only send that to Chuck. I'm just letting you as a yeah, woman. That's fine. Um, same thing. Uh, chemicals are going to go up a little bit. Fertilizer is going to go up a little bit. Um, payroll is going up. I think payroll, what I have, same thing, roughly 3%. Um, I have that number here. Um, I have the just the payroll. It's like 6500 in salaries. But that doesn't include the payroll taxes and fees. I haven't, um, I haven't plugged those numbers in yet. I think it's... Uh, but it's just like $1,000 or something. Yeah. It's very minimum, 1200 So I would say total and all that, probably 8000 in payroll, payroll taxes and fees, salaries. Okay. Um, that's really it. I mean. Well, I'll the budget. Can I take a question? Yeah, I was going to ask Chuck. Meeting expenses and travel expenses, who, where does that come from? The enterprise fund? Enterprise fund. Enterprise. What's the golf? Oh, the golf course. Well, golf that's course. a question for them. I think uh, they have like their golf superintendents meetings and things of that nature, yeah, those sure. kinds of seminars. So my stuff on my budget falls into under association dues and seminars. Yeah. Yeah. Ours like if I want to travel from right. Ours falls under education. Yeah. So that okay. So that that line's not used by us. Somebody's used. <laughs> Isn't that for Chuck? Mm -hmm. Do you guys don't get paid for traveling expenses and stuff like that? No, sir. Was Dan using it? I don't know. Stay what are you looking at? Is it getting charged? Is it getting hit? Yeah. Do we have this? How much? Oh, sure. You're in the golf course enterprise fund, right? Yep. It's not coming from. I think it's under administrative. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's under administrative. Meeting, meeting and travel expense. There was nothing booked in the last month, but so far this year, there's been twelve hundred and thirty-three dollars booked in that. Eleven hundred and thirty-two. Well, yeah, twelve hundred thirty-three. Twelve hundred thirty-three dollars as of twenty twenty-one. We didn't have a PGA show, and, and we wouldn't book it there anyway. That's always under education for us. Can you, um, Jeff, can you email Lucy in the morning and ask her to bring that down for you? Just ask, ask for the uh, account yes, detail or general ledger on that account. So. Yeah, then we can see where that belongs. Yeah, I always just thought that was PGA show. That yeah, exactly. Like, they didn't do anything this year. There was no PGA. They put it somewhere else anyway. Yeah. And I always put it under education because that's what we go for, to be educated. <laughs> okay. That might even be mine. $125 perfectly, it seems like an event, like it costs an event. You know, well, we'll get new what do they do around the GL's Yep, yeah, I'll get them. Okay. I mean, we could combine both of our, you know, travel expenses and put it there. Yeah. But I mean, I've never done it that way. I, I didn't. Yeah, we've never done it. Until you brought it up, I'd never even seen the yeah. line before, honestly. Yeah. I thought it was a. a Honestly, that was a raffle or a Dan Cox thing. I didn't know. Not ours. Okay. Okay. So that's it for the budget. Any other check with the general fund? Yeah, he's, he'll get me those uh, changes to the general fund operations. I'll that's plug those in and okay. I'll adjust the amount of uh, increase the fund balance to flatten your assessments. And you guys can talk about your assessments at the next meeting where you want them to be. So. Sounds good. Um, the next is the update on the landscape. Um, I did send that paperwork to Scott, Jennifer. Um, we have not paid them anything at this point. No. Um, so I'm assuming he's working on it. I would assume so. Okay, I will give a call tomorrow. But, um, we did um, sign the paperwork, so Juniper Landscaping is going to doing the common area landscaping, um, reducing the berms. Um, you know, doing all the different things. They will be putting together a whole um, portfolio, so, and they will come to the meeting and we'll make sure that the residents are aware of it to see what we're going to be doing and uh, where their uh, money is going for. Um, and I guess at that point, you know, all the residents can, you know, make a comment as to yay or nay, and I guess it's the, the board that will have the final decision in the committee. Um, but after going through three different companies, they were the best, they do the whole thing. And um, I think we're good with them. Okay, I'll 
Anybody else have anything about the landscape committee? Okay. Um, the pro shop remediation. Um, have we heard? I know that um, Christine um, sent an email asking if we were going to do this on August 1st, but as um, we discussed, we're not sure where we are with that at this point and with the pro shop. Um, air quality being okay, um, we would rather push it off until um, next year um, to see, you know, if that's, um, you know, and, and we'll check the air quality throughout the year, you know, but right now everything seems to be fine. I don't see the rush to do it. And um, so at this point, um, we'll just let them know that we'll just leave it. We're not going to go with it on this first check. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we were, Tony had had kind of dug into the agreement itself and uh, he had found some inconsistencies in how the HVAC system was listed as part of common property versus not common property and ultimately he was starting to draft a, uh, a memo kind of taking issue if you will with our responsibility to do anything with the HVAC system. Um, however kind of hand in glove with that, we were able to establish a, uh, a conference call with Andy to talk a little bit about the potential of purchasing the building itself. And that, that actual conversation went fairly well. Uh, it was very, very positive. Um, he went through kind of his, his song and dance about the amount of money they recently put into the building. Uh, and, you know, talking about, uh, I guess he spent somewhere around 700000 on the building did the roof just a few years ago, um, looking for a long-term investment, you know, that constant cash flow, if you will, now that they've invested all that money into it. And uh, in what he indicated is, you know, he's, his initial term with Duffy's, I think, was like an eight-year term. He's got like five years on it remaining. He's got option for two more five-year terms with them. Um, when he circled back because he's, you know, he's not the majority partner. He's, he's got a partner that kind of, they've changed, if you will. Um, Q Grady Miners uh, sold out of it. The other partner sold out to him a bit. He's got a new partner, um, and he, he needed to talk with him and uh, see what his thoughts were after putting all this money into it. Ultimately, um, he, he indicated that they did do an appraisal in just February of this year. Um, the appraised amount is not something they would sell it for. Um, they would sell to us now if we want to purchase it. Um, his suggestion was actually to let the Duffy's initial term run out and it might be a more appealing situation because right now he, he can show in his books that he is set to make 300000 net going forward at this point after all these investments. So he's looking at a market cap plus the plus the net. So he's he and his partner set the price at six million. If we're interested, he said you know, not interested now. You're still going to have the first right of refusal. This isn't the first right of refusal because we are really not in a position to sell. This was you inquiring whether or not we're interested. So you would still get the first right of refusal. Uh, if we are interested, um, we'll start with the term sheet. And uh, then he would enter into a non-disclosure, so you can actually look at his, his books. Um, and we'd have to figure that out with, uh, with Tony and, and uh, Lenora as to how we do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be as simple as going in and simply looking at the books and him not providing us with anything. Um, but if he provides us with something, it's a little more difficult for us to, to do, do that because everything we touch is a public record with very few exceptions. So. Mm -hmm. Triggers. Yeah, it triggers. So we have to be careful in that regard that we don't step on his uh, his interest. So um, that's kind of where we're at. And uh, and so what I did. Did at he your, say what it appraised for? No. No, that's something you get to look at <laughs> once you open up. The, <laughs> so th those are some of the documents that he'll be happy to open up once you sign a term sheet. Um, and of it, course, that term sheet doesn't mean that you're going to contract. Right. Okay, it's just you agree on the basic terms of a potential sale. So, Chuck, does that um, 
appraisal is that public record if you get an appraisal or can you have a private appraisal yeah, yeah it's a private, private thing private entity private appraisal so I think we could go to leap and maybe look it up but you can't you no. Would, no you would have probably done that already so now you can go on and see what leap has got for appraised value on that it's but it's close there yeah. no they're they're for tax purposes right. only taxing authority purposes only so what i did was i took the uh, kind of the large capital items we talked about at the last meeting dovetailed in the price of the TAQ building. I put a little extra fluff in there to deal with the transactional cost, um, just to make sure we can cover attorneys, documents, uh, recording fees, and whatever else might pop up. Um, and then I ran the numbers for you through a calculator um, and what that would mean. And if you include the commercial units, which I, I gotta be honest with you, I have a tough time doing, on this list of improvements right. because this is all outside the gates or or those that are specific to our operation here really don't benefit that commercial property um, is $700 a year for 30 years if you back out the commercial it actually comes in at 725 for 30 years that that's an assumption of a 30-year term for starters 50% debt service reserve on outstanding uh, principal and interest, and as you go through your amortization schedule, that adjusts down. Um, and a 3.5% interest rate, which I can tell you is pretty doable. You guys have built out, you have a great collection rate, you got your issues with the uh, golf course bond behind you, and well taken care of, you could probably get it rated. Um, so that's probably high but I'd like to be high for the purposes of running this, so. And that's including all these items here? That is including $14 million worth of construction and acquisition. Chuck, I thought the HOA owned the community center. Uh, they, we talked at the last meeting about a new community center and the potential of the district doing it. You've got to realize going in that we're going to do this as a tax-exempt financing, which is the really true benefit of the district doing it, that it can open up that for public access to the extent somebody realizes that, which you're not advertising that. But if they do, you have put into place typically a fee that is comparable to what your resident pays for that community center, and they get a one, you know, do it on one year renewed, right? Just like you pay your taxes every year. That's right. Yeah, I remember. Yep. And that usually that number is so large that it's just not appealing to the average right. job. They'll they'll go to the YMCA or join a gym and somewhere all they could else. Use would be the community they could only use the community center. It's just the community they center. Use the pools so they else. nope, they come straight in and straight out. You know, maybe you key fob everything else and you have an access uh, to the community center. Oh. Yep. Yep. So you, you uh, have you have the ability to the pool would be considered part of the community center. Yeah. No, if it's if building, it's it if it's not paid building. for by district issued tax exempt financing, no. Uh -huh. Just because it's on the grounds doesn't mean it's ac accessible. Right. It's only those facilities that were uh, financed that way. Pump house. Pump house is not in here. Right. But I think I think we that's irrigation. We keep pump house with the irrigation fund and. and yeah, I was thinking about that a little bit as the meeting was going on. I am going to look into financing on that because money is pretty darn cheap right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So to borrow it at two, two and a half percent and spread it out over five years. Yeah. And then you're not taking the chunk. Yeah, I'm, the I'm not taking the depreciation dollars out of the fund right. and, and leaving those available to the extent the golf course needs it in an emergency situation. So. The only thing I'd say about that too is the not necessarily the pump house, but the pump house is a number we know. But the general, uh, I guess, system. I think all that. You can what's the shape. life? What's the life expectancy? You're, you're in good shape. This is uh, this is new enough that it's likely all C900 except for your fittings and your valves. Um, I've got a system over at Pelican Landing that's 10 years older than this system, Still and we it. change out the occasional gate valve, and it's usually just because the gate valve is frozen over time or it's not shutting completely, pull out the guts and drop in new guts. And it's not something that you, you need to worry about replacing the transmission system. That gate, the, uh, the pump house has definitely got a, a shorter life expectancy. Okay. We'll never see the need to replace the transmission. We won't be here when it's time to fully replace. Okay. So. I just think that might be something else. No, we, we looked at it intently over at Pelican Sound and came to that same conclusion. At, they're about the same age as you all, and uh, the general manager was thinking he had to do that, and the engineer was, no, don't need to worry about that. So. 
So this would include Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Now, explain this to me. Or we take uh -huh. New debt. That would be additional debt. That's correct. That's your that's your new debt, and this is your existing operation maintenance, irrigation assessment, and the the existing bond assessment three twenty five. So it's all three of those numbers. I'll show you where I got those from in this. Is that total? Total. And then the three twenty five would be coming off. So it's 14 million, assuming per oh, door would be 700 annually. Correct. That's these numbers here. Chuck, one question: uh, If he's netting 300,000, would that 300,000 be rebated back That's to the my president? Question. That's what I was getting to. What about the receivable from the lease on the business? Receivable on the building to yeah, that, Duffy's. Yeah, that would. I mean, that would so be kind of your revenue. It, it wouldn't be this number. It would be this number less whatever the receivables are. That yeah. money would be used to offset something within the community. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. you wouldn't necessarily directly give it back right. as a rebate. You could use it for other things. Yeah, looking at three hundred thousand, eleven hundred fifty eight units. Yeah. I mean, fifty nine dollars. What I would do after any additional operating costs that you might have to incur as the new landlord, because uh, remember now it's going to be on yeah. you. <laughs> some of that can go towards that annual payment. Yeah. On the financing for the building. We'll Which have a triple reduce. indemnity lease, though, right? Hmm? We'll have that triple indemnity <laughs> lease that we love so much. Yeah, right. Okay, so for those of you here, we are the $14 million bond. Um, what Chuck built into that was the purchasing the building, um, the road repairs and resurfacing, which we are going to start in 2025, the landscaping, which we're currently working on, um, the wall, that's if we build the wall. Um, on corkscrew? On corkscrew. I mean, they, this, this is just kind of wish we were throwing these things. And um, <coughs> building a new community center. So um, that would. Where did you build the new community Right here. Outside the gate? No, Not inside the gate. The gate right. right over here. Oh, okay. okay. Just like a L, but right there in that lot. Oh. And that's what the HOA is currently. I mean, I know they've looked at it before. I don't and, you know, if we can do this all as a municipal bond and, you know, so the residents are, are, then we own everything on the property. We would own the Duffy's building, we'd own the pro shop, the parking lot and all that. So um, I, maybe a little bit of history about the building. Okay. So the building was sold. U.S. Homes originally built the building, and they. So let's had, clarify what building we're talking about. Oh, the, 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 the pro shop Duffy's yeah. that that building. So, U.S. Homes built that building initially, and somehow finagled a way where they were able to sell it, whether it was legal or not. They said it was. I, a lot of us don't think it was, but they did it. But originally, it was part of. Originally, it was part of the community. Twenty third hour, they sold it. So for 20 years, 2004, not 20 years, but 15 plus, 16, 17 years, we've paid rent at the pro shop. We pay close to $100,000 a year in rent or more. This is what spurred the conversation about purchasing the building, oh, yeah. the amount of they're paying for that small space. And, and you just purchase the one building? It's, yeah, all, it's a whole building. It's all one building. For the, for the profitability of it, you, you'd want to purchase the whole thing because to, to what Chuck just said, and he's disclosed to us, he's making $300,000 a year on this building. The only downside is the assessed value of the building now with the business. I mean, it's inflated based on what the assessment of, if you just purchased a building, but with having a business, it increases that cost. That's the only negative in this scenario. Um, the net gain is very positive. Right. Extremely positive. It would put us in a position where we, we would, you know, and we would still pay rent to, you know, right pocket, left pocket. Yeah. And we would still pay rent, and, and I think that's more than fair, and we should continue to do that. We're going to raise your rent, by the way. Cool, man. <laughs> Whatever you think works. Whatever you think works. But the, the point being is then we don't have to worry about things like, like nothing against Christine and their group. I mean, they're just doing her job. But kind of pressure tactics to when are you going to do this? Yeah. Well, if we bought this building, we would look to gut the pro shop and completely redo it because it's 20 plus years without any kind of, all we've done is slap paint on it and put some new floors down like 12 years ago. It needs to be gutted and renovated and up 
faded and you know like a home yep. and it would provide us the ability to do that and then if we wanted to do things or to make changes or have more flowers around or do whatever we wanted it's our building it's Span the cbd bar building. there's so many things we could do by owning it so it's 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 a plus and in the long run you're probably not going to be paying much more than what you're paying now right and you control you don't have some secondary entity owning part of your community which is what you got now it's like a tick on a hound dog i mean this guy's right there and he's sucked on for life and, and not, he's a good businessman mm -hmm. he's made good money off this obviously he just disclosed to us and that's in a downturn because you know that that was probably higher pre-covid so the, uh, the additional information on that sale was the CDD board had to vote, but at that time there were no residents on the CDD board. <laughs> he was home. I, board believe was that, I believe that transaction was closed on the Friday after Thanksgiving 2003. It, it was definitely closed on a Friday after. Nobody in the... I had just moved in. I didn't know anything you know, was going on. I moved in in October 2003, but you know, the residents weren't... People we were just weren't paying attention. You know, and nobody was on the CDD board. It was all U.S. Homes representatives right. as our resident at CDD. Nobody came on. The two seats came on in 2004, right? I think, or three seats. Yeah. Don't look at me. Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> I think it was two, and then Raymond and I ran in 2006. Mm -hmm. I remember that? But anyway, so you know, it's unfortunate. Yeah, but we that's how it happened. So, um... Chuck, when did Rathel jump on board? 2005. All right. So the orders up this they they would then they if would be a renter. they would be a, if we if we bought it they would be our renter they would so pretty much we, they would fill out <clears throat> or complete the lease if we buy some, if we buy that we have to honor the lease that they have am I correct that it's a five year right yeah they have another five years then no, they have two five years, years. No, two years yeah they're, they're they're three years into a five year lease. Mm. I thought he said five, three years into no, eight year lease. The three years into an eight year lease. Correct. Five more years. Oh, five sorry, more. Sorry, sorry, with sorry, two sorry, more sorry. eight year options. I've left with two more five year options. Right. Okay, that's how oh, five, five years. So, so it's um, two more five year options. So, yes, at that point, I mean, my understanding is if we bought it, we can't change their lease. <laughs> No, you. No, we would, it would have to. Yeah, I think so. be a, just, it would be assigned, and uh, and he's got a he's got a financing deal with them as well on the improvements because that seven hundred thousand was not on his back. Right. Um, Duffy's is paying him back over time for the right. seven hundred thousand. Yeah. So. Um, hey, hey, um, with that being said, the number was he said three hundred thousand. I believe he can show. Keep in mind, is a number that can go up or go down, right? Right. So well, that's a good number either way. Yeah. That's a, you know, three yeah, yeah, yeah. He he actually said three thirty, but yeah. yeah. So, my like you said, it can go up and down. My understanding, their lease is it's either a, a set number or it's a percentage, it's and it's always been a percentage. Yeah. There's a floor with no ceiling. Right. Yeah. Right. So minimum. Yeah, like those. Right. And then it's depending on how good their business is, is how much they pay. Right. So, so think, think about it like that as residents. Every time you go to eat there, you're helping yeah. yourself. Helping, helping your yourself. community, yeah. In a way. I mean. You're spending a lot of time. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you really are. That's so, a great way to put it. Um, you know, and again, I mean, the wall is that something we're going to do. I mean, that's, you know. Are we set on the, on the addition clubhouse of this, uh, what are we calling it, community center? Is that definitely going for? for Not yet? For no, I don't yeah. think the HOA hasn't finalized anything with the new community center. No, we're, we're looking at an overall picture of what we might need and how to finance for it, but we can do anything about two years out. Right. Before we make the first step moving forward. And this is something That's, that we would we would definitely be a participant in, you know, and working with this because it would be a community center. It just makes more sense to try to bond it out, and that's why I brought it up, and I'm on the committee that's looking into that too. It's it just if we're going to do it, I mean, then it would make more sense to do it this route and bond it out. We're going to get a better interest rate. You're going to get to pay it off over longer terms. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Sure. The bushes, well, Miramar Lakes, where you're going up that hill, Griffin, 
Miramar Lakes on the left hand side, they have bushes that are really tall. How long does it take them to get that tall? Do anybody have any idea? Those are, I believe, ficus trees. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, not very, the ficus don't take very long at all. Uh, ficus grows about three, four feet a year. Yeah. But it'll be years before it'll cover up what it took down, if that's what you're asking. Can you even plant ficus? Yeah, but I'm thinking relatively. I would have, have to look not into not it. Oh, I'm not sure. Or, I mean, the residents on Weymouth wanted a wall similar to if you go down to uh, the corner of Three Oaks and um, Corkscrew. That new development over there, what is that? On the left. On the left there. They have a wall. Uh, and the residents had said they wanted a wall to block the noise from corkscrew. So this is just kind of, uh, personally, I think doing shrubbery is going to do the same effect. Because we well, do. I think that there oh, needs you're on way to be a fence. Is that fence that they're going to put up, is that going to stay? No. Or no. Hurt? You're talking like a chain link prior yeah. to putting up the, yeah. That would definitely need to be something like that. Yeah, because when... Well, there is on the access road right here. There's right, a chain link. Right. So just have that run. Yeah. It that way, parts of it is, but not most of it. What will happen is the road will be expanded. There'll be some landscaping. The village wants a 10-foot wide um, walking path. Then there'll be more landscaping from the village, and then we will be doing landscaping. So the landscaping will be a sound barrier. Um, and people have said walls, I mean, they put the wall up on 75, and the people right up against the wall there, I guess, don't get as much noise, but I hear as much noise on, on Gerwich. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't... It goes over the wall. It does. Right. So, I'm, I mean, we have the wall in here. Yeah, foliage would absorb sound more than a wall would. You're yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I just think a chain link fence and, and plant it on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and, and that's just to keep people from coming across the pond or getting in. To yeah, it's security. It's more of security. security. Defensive security. security. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, if they leave the fence and we plant front and back of it, you know, I'm not sure. Well, that will be down the road. But there were people that wanted a wall there. That's why we included this saying, okay, well, you know, but if we, if we were able to get this bond, um, it doesn't mean that, you know, we couldn't move the money to a different uh, project. Project. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, um, you know, if we put here and we want to do a wall, we decided that, you know, additional landscaping is better, then that money would go for that. So it's just that these are the things that were questioned or asked for, so we put this on the list. But the city may also be replacing it, right? No. They're not. We're replacing what? Some of the landscaping? What they took down by mistake. That's the letter that's that Joey the, is sending yeah. out. They were hoping that they will. Because they ripped out irrigation, the whole nine yards. Yeah, and so, so they, were, they will be hoping to put in some of that, but they may put in 25% of what we really want. Right. But yes, we want them to put something in. I don't want them to put it in now. I'd, I'd prefer to get the monetary value. Yes. Yeah. Negotiate a monetary value and walk away. And then we'll us. take it and then we'll use it. Mm -hmm. use it for yeah. Good call. Because yeah. you never know what they're going to put in. Yeah, I don't know how they could put in irrigation when we don't know what we're going to put out yeah. there for eventually. Yeah, that's why I told Eileen so, too. I was like, um, well, she asked me if they were going to repair it. I was like, yeah, but we don't know what we're going to have yet. Right. So right. it's kind of so hard to. Know. So, yes, the monetary would be much better because I'd rather us to have control over what's going there and not on a whim for them to say, oh, this is the best. Right, right. Okay. Could you please help me with. At the corner of Corkscrew and Three Oaks, are we turning left? Are we turning if right? If you're going down Corkscrew, yeah. cross over Three Oaks. Over Three Oaks. And there's a, uh, a uh, development the there. The place. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It's called the place. Southwest corner. Yeah. Southwest, Southwest corner. Yeah. Gotcha. The place. I think it's called the place, isn't it? No, you're just talking about over here. Place is out east. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. It's, it's sterile village or something. I don't it's across from Southern yeah. Level. Straight across Corkscrew. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. gotcha. Okay, now I'll have to look at that. Okay, so um, that's where we are with that. Um, not that I think we can make. That's a, oh, you're talking about the wall that they have there? Yeah, it's a, it's a heavy, and that's a beautifully landscaped wall, but it's right. a small wall. It's a small that's wall. That's a big wall. And it's short, it's little, right? It's, it's not. Yeah. Um, Eight feet, ten feet. Yes, look. You gotta remember one thing down there that sterile place they call it. Right. Six foot wall. 
we have out here. This is true. Because they're going up 75. Right. They don't go that way. <clears throat> I still believe a six foot wall is not going to help. No. Oh, no. No, I don't, I don't think a wall would be, I mean, it might help the people that are right there, but it's going to bounce right over to the people across the street. So, I, I don't, I don't see, and I, if we, if we do a wall, how far down do you go? Because you can't just put a wall here and then just have it. Now, that's why I think a chain link back fence and then put those kind of bushes up so the back. I like that idea a lot, like what Miramar has. That's, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what we can, when we get the landscaping, you know, we can talk to Juniper and tell them that's what we're interested in and talk to the, you know, um, you know, maybe we can get an estimate from Juniper and they, we can take that to the county and say, all right, this is what we need to replace. So. Now, with that being said, on that idea, which I love, I think it would be great, we would not be able to maintain that because once we get over uh, eight feet in the air, it's a special insurance, special, so we have to contract that Tree getting trimmed. Uh, we so, wouldn't be able to yeah, do that. So it's hard hard out. Yeah, you have to hire it out. Plus, it's on a slope. It's going to be on a berm. Right. So you're going to be down in a swell. You're going to need equipment to get you up and keep it level and everything. Right. So that's something else we have to take into Oh, I could only put those if, if, they, if the city would. They won't do that. Yeah, and, and, expe yeah. and especially ficuses because they don't like they don't want you really planting them anymore because they're considered invasive now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't want to ficus. Yeah, I wouldn't plant ficus. Yeah. Well, if you the go roots. back here, yeah, and look at the ficus, they yeah. grow, but the bottom is bare. Oh, that yeah, the roots are very the roots invasive. Are, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Gotcha. And that, that new Sorry. and that new path that would probably tear into that new path they're going to build. Absolutely. Yeah. They're going to be you know five ten years from looking at you going. Well, yeah, it looks like you're going to be putting this new path. Yeah. There's actually some out there ficus trees. Um, you got ficus shrubs, bushes. You know, different. They've been propagated. Do whatever now. Um, but we have ficus trees out there, and that you can see the roots from those. It's basically what you're going to get. Um, if you if you take the time to walk along that path and look, just no. 